So, Michelle, what led you to start your own consultancy? Ah, okay, yeah. So, um, I was thinking about this. Um, at the time that I decided to go into business and you know, go it alone, I was working in that large organisation that I talked about, and that was about 10 years. And to be honest, I was pretty exhausted. Um, yes, my career had, um, had grown and had achieved many things, but yeah, it was certainly not really what floated in my boat anymore. And I wanted to see if I could run a business, um, take the coaching skills out there, put all my knowledge and learning around businesses and how they run into practice. I guess the business side for me was just a bit of an extra challenge and um, to see if I could stretch myself. Because I did know that I could obviously take coaching skills and go and work in another large or small organisation. I think I was um, starting to understand what really floated my boat. Um, I was hitting my 30s and, you know, as I said, questioning my career, what it was that I liked to do. And variety was a massive factor for me. So how do you spread the word about your business and what you do? So, um, yeah, so for us, um, spreading the word about what we do has got to be in, um, consistent with the way that we do business. Um, it takes time, I think, to figure this out in terms of what works right for your business. And, you know, it's taken a few years to do that. But for us, um, building and maintaining relationships is really key. And we typically um, spread the word um, through other people and through referrals. But, you know, the bits we do ourselves is around catching up with people and we try and do this all of that. Um, we like to get out there, have coffees with people, find out what they're up to. And it also gives us a bit of an opportunity to share a bit about what we do too. It really, importantly, I think, keeps us on the pulse as well. So it allows us to keep learning and um, whilst putting ourselves in the mind of others. And our aim in our business is to add value at every touch point that we have with somebody that we meet. So that could be, for example, sharing um, some information that we've read about, some insights around, you know, the, that we're working in, knowledge, or even just a thought-provoking question. So we're really conscious about, you know, going out, meeting people, having coffees, um, but also giving something back at the same time. We do also send out a regular, so we have a website, of course, and we have a LinkedIn, and we send out a regular blog, uh, which is also helping to spread the word. Again, I guess with the blog, we're starting to get more refined in terms of some of the things we're talking about, the messages that we're sharing. And we heard the other day that somebody was actually reading it in America, so it's uh, gone across the water. So. What is the biggest obstacle that you've personally had to overcome? Yeah, I um, yeah, I would bottle this down to a couple of things um, if I can. Um, I think um, personal tenacity and resilience to keep going is um, massive, and not to be underestimated. And as you just said there, Sarah, like, you know, running your own business, I, I see it as a bit like a roller coaster. So one day you can get the celebration because, you know, something great happens and you break through the client or you win a piece of work. And then the next day you can have a knock and it's like, how do you keep yourself level through that and not allow yourself to get so spiked and not to have cause? I know that like, when I first started uh, my business and um, I started to retrain as a coach alongside working in the other business. And I can remember qualifying and being like so excited to get out there. And I was like, yeah, I can't wait to get out and coach other people. And then I was like, where, where are these people? <laughs> and then I suddenly had like a smack in the face around, oh my God, I've got to go and sell myself, which sounds really obvious now. But at the time I was so excited on, you know, what I was going to do and how I was going to help people. I've not really thought about um, how I let them know I was there and actually what it would take to sell a service. Um, that was a massive lesson for me. And then that like, links quite nicely to this point, which is around keeping that flow of work coming in and how it does require effort and focus. Um, and if you do take your eye off the ball, it doesn't take long for things to start slowing down. So I would say, um, you know, that massive learning early on, but then the ongoing learning that kind of says, right, you've got to keep in touch with you, you've got to keep people aware of what you're up to. Um, because actually, I would say, you know, if someone's going to make a decision about buying a service like yours, you'd really want to see the person in your mind. And if they don't know you exist, or you've not kept up to date, why would they? Um, I would also say that that links nicely into thinking about um, your financial planning as well, for both your business and to you personally, because you will get spikes and um, drop offs in the business. It's not like when you're employed by somebody and you get that money coming in every month, you have to plan for that now. So yes, yeah, so personal um, tenacity and resilience to keep going, 
making sure you keep your eye on um, generating the work coming through, not just the work that you're doing, and keeping a forward eye. I would also say on your plans to make sure yeah you're covering yourself both in your business and your personal. How does this fit in with your family life now? Yeah, um, great question. Uh, so up till now, it's just been me and my husband, so it's been relatively easy on that on that front. Um, things are about to change because I'm now seven months pregnant. Um, I think it's really starting to make me think about my business in different eyes now. And the question that I am really kind of pondering about is how can um, the business work differently for me now? Um, and this is definitely not at the expense of clients on my business by any means. I think it's about looking at it and saying, right, what's the right balance and the right flexibility I need to have to be able to do both? How can I, um, you know, have a family now where I've got, I'll have children in the new year? Um, and suddenly that um, kicks up loads more things around logistical planning, making sure I'm giving my, um, my time and attention to everything. I think the thing I do um, fundamentally believe, though, is actually running my own business is giving me so much more choice and control how will I go about doing that. Um, if I was working for somebody else, it is the reality that I'm going to have to change the way that I work. Um, and like I say, I think for me, it's around some of the logistics and the planning side of that. So helping me, myself to be a bit more organised when I've got more to be um, focused on and <laughs> um, needing my time. I'm definitely working my business partner on that and my husband and I, I do trust we will figure it out. One of the things um, that I did when I set up in business first off was because I was looking for that balance and that flexibility um, and like I said I had worked quite long um, hours in my other organisation <coughs> is that I don't work Fridays now so this was a choice I made really early on and it was about um, giving myself a bit of me time so um, I felt like my Fridays I was just filling up with stuff yeah, I could be busy on a Friday, but was it really kind of value-add stuff? So I decided to set myself the challenge of, well, actually, if I can get my work done in the four days in the week, then I can use the Friday for me. And I can go and see friends and family. I can run household errands. Um, it also allows me then to free up my weekends so that I can spend time with my husband and family again. I think for, um, for me personally, it's really important that I recharge my batteries. Michelle, what is your proudest moment or your biggest achievement? Two things for me around this. Um, so first off and foremost, it's every time that I coach an individual team, I feel such a huge sense of pride and it really reminds me about why I'm doing this. Um, I think to be in a position where you're helping somebody or enabling somebody, whatever words you want to use, take those leap forward in their own personal performance and you start to see their confidence grow and you to achieve things maybe that they never thought possible. Such a privilege. Um, and to work closely to with, with you know a number of leaders and teams. Um, yeah, I get a massive kick from that and I'm always proud to do that. I think if I look at it from a running a business perspective, which was the challenge for me, the extra bit, I look back and I think, oh those, you know, it's great winning pieces of work. I'll always have that little special thing around those first few pieces of work that I won. And they help get the business off the ground. So I'll never forget my first ever paying client, one-to-one. -one. And then there was like a time in probably my first 12 months where I took a punt in a tender and I was successful. And that really like, you know, I don't pay for to look at it. I was like, yeah, there's no way I'll ever get this. And I thought, oh, no, just go for it and see. And that really helped me to then grow the business to the next level. And then I would also say like, um, Procuring like our first program of work it was um, a massive achievement as well, and you know it's really great for us to be able to sit here a few years down the line and say actually that client is still a client of ours now. We do different work with them now, um, but yeah, yeah. So I would definitely say um, you know every day I get kind of proud moments, but looking back and I think yeah that's pretty cool. <laughs> Michelle. What advice would you give to somebody who is just about to start up their own business? First off, um, I think be really clear on why you're doing this and what it's all about, but for you, not for anybody else. Because that's the thing that you're going to have to go back to when um, you're riding the waves of business. You try not to lose sight of this. It will help you keep focus on the ups and downs. And appreciating that we all go into business and we all want to run our own business for very different reasons, and that's totally fine. That's you know that is brilliant. 
be really clear as to what you know what it is for you that you're doing it for and then you can kind of anchor back to that when uh, yeah things get a bit a bit tough um i would say definitely when you're starting up in business is to surround yourself with as many like-minded positive people that you can don't underestimate the um how powerful this can be to help you because I think for me personally, I found, yes, I was dead excited about the coaching, I was raring to go, and then suddenly I was like, oh my God, I've got to run a business, <laughs> I've got to get out there and meet people and all of that. One of the ways I first started off doing that was to, um, I started to do networking, um, yeah, and that helped me, um, not necessarily, I would say, to get a lot of clients per se, but it really helped me understand that there was this whole network of people out there going through the same thing. It was more of a kind of sharing knowledge and learning together and supporting each other. And, and yeah, it was like, a, I guess, a bit of a team. Um, I've since gone on to work with the most amazing business partner. Um, so, yeah, I would never knock that. Um, I'm so much better working with her than I was on my own. <laughs> um, so that's really powerful for me as well. And um, having the support of my family and my husband especially has really helped. And then the final thing, this was another, like, um, I think moment for me was around kind of taking a learning mindset so quite early on I used to be quite self-critical so I'd for example go out maybe a networking event and I'd do a little picture about myself and then I'd go home and I'd think oh my god that was awful I've done like a really bad job and I was like quite harsh on myself um, and I suddenly thought one day my lord if I carry on with this attitude I'm just going to get nowhere fast so I created this little mental tool called Learn and Evolve. And it's about trying to take the learnings from everything that you try in business. So no matter whether you try something, it works extremely well or it doesn't, there's always a learning to be taken. And if you take the learning and then think, right, how am I now going to evolve from that and move forward? Then that can only help you create the movement in your business. And um, I think if you adopt the attitude of, oh my God, I failed, that was the worst thing ever and all of that, it can only slow you down. Um, I'll potentially stop you. Um, so I would definitely say as much as possible, try and learn and evolve from everything that you do. So, right. Well, thank you very much for your time.